Fire Brigade, can I help you? Yes, the house is on flame flames. Do you know if anybody's in the house? I know there's a lot of young people living in there. A report of a house alight with an unknown number of people trapped inside. This is an emergency. Uh, mate, what is it, 10 past midnight? Um, just received a call for uh, our ladder platform and our pump uh, to a ARP second structure alarm. Yeah, turn left on Gibbs, yeah, and then it's fifth on the right. Yeah, it's gone. Crew 27's the third station to arrive. We might have to run it off our pump. They want three lines of 38 off that, so we won't have any, any water for the ground monitor. The house is engulfed by flames. Neighbours confirmed there were people inside just a few hours earlier. We just seen the smoke and we just rang up the fire brigade and, and we just black smoke everywhere, that's all. The priority is to make sure they're out. Access to that burning house is a major problem. There are security grills on most of the windows and the roof's on fire. A little bit of urgency as you can see the dwelling behind us is, is, is on fire. We've got some crews trying to gain access to a particular room in the front of the house. This isn't the first time police have been at this house tonight. A few hours ago, they were called to a dispute here. The fear is that's what triggered the fire and someone could still be inside. What do you got, mate? Looks like the kitchen, does it? Lounge room. There's not much left of the lounge room, but it's that main bedroom that's worrying Hazy. It's where the tenant sleeps and is most likely to be trapped. You see this door open, guys? The most important thing, I think, they want that internal door open, but... The um, grills on the front windows are all around the house, so they're on the windows and the doors. So entry into the house is really difficult. But access isn't the only hazard. Hey, mate, no walking under these. As you see, the side of the house has just collapsed where the wires are connected to, so you've got wire, active wires running across the road now. And then wires are down. If they come down any further, they could be in contact with those, and there's an electrical shock risk, over. There's a double celebration at 62 today. A couple of boys have, uh, it's their birthday today. So we just thought we'd get them a couple of cakes and uh, have a little celebration. Two birthdays on the one day, wouldn't read about it. So we'll go in, give them some cakes and uh, wish them a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Troy and Rochi. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, good on you, mate. Thank you. Yeah, yes. Where's nice? Louis seems more interested in the event than the birthday boys do. So how old are you guys again? Some will call it 33. Mate, I look good for a 50-year-old. Did you make a wish? I did. I didn't. Oh, had another go. Thanks very much, fellas. Happy birthday to you too, Troy. Yes, so do you, Rochi. It's actually my birthday as well, guys. <laughs> Louis on fire, but his one-liners will have to wait. I'm good. Police calling. How are you? Hey, good, mate. Just got a query person's cat. No further information. The birthday boys race to the scene. It's only just around the corner here. We'll be there in a minute. We'll investigate further. Sixty-two arrives to find a man trapped in his car. His four-year-old son is unhurt, but he's confused and upset. When we first arrived, what we've got is a uh, two-vehicle MV8 T-Bone. Uh, we've got one male passenger that's still in the vehicle. He's uh, suspected spinal injuries. Uh, there was also a uh, young boy that was in the car. He's a little bit shaken up, but the ambulance are looking after him right now. While little Omar's checked out by a paramedic, the Fireys and Ambos work together to free Dad Yaya from the driver's seat. How you going, Yaya? Okay. Our role in a situation like this, where ambulance rescue is in attendance, 
is to provide fire support, just in case. What happened? He crashed the car. He was travelling in the back of the car with his dad. He was wearing a seatbelt, which is a very good thing, wasn't it? Because we always wear a seatbelt when we get in the car. But little boys can only be brave for so long. When you see kids at fires or MVAs like this, the first thing you think of is your, is your own kids and your own vulnerability. They're always crying because mum or daddy's hurt. Uh, it just breaks your heart when you see um, accidents like this and the, and the kid crying and upset and looking for mummy or daddy. The gentleman in the car had suspected uh, spinal injury, so they took very good care to immobilise his spine and make sure we got him out uh, in the best way we could for his spine. And he's been transported now, and they'll check him out, uh, give him a few X-rays at the hospital. Very soon, Omar will be reunited with his mum and dad. You can see, you can see Daddy in the ambulance. Hey, look, can you see that ambulance? And we're going to follow Daddy all the way across. Okay, okay? Back at the house fire, it's looking more and more suspicious. As you can see, uh, the devastation the fire support quickly spread through the house. Um, the ceiling has come in, these beams are all unsecure, unstable. Too dangerous for anyone to enter the house. The front half of the house is gutted, and it seems there's no one inside. There's another building at the back. Yeah, Granny. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> no. So there's no one inside that you guys can see. But the police remember that earlier dispute. They're wondering if the fight escalated out of control after they left the first time. It's critical information. Hazy decides to order another search. If you happen to find anyone in there, yep. right, um, leave them where they're sitting. Oh, yeah. Just have a look for, for bullet holes, stab wound, anything like that. Yeah. Two tough hours later, and the house blaze is under control. Just watch it with that line. There's people inside. There's crew inside, so just watch them. They're right on now. We put one crew in to do a primary search of the residence just to confirm that there's nobody in there. The search for victims is focused on the front half of the building, where the fire was most intense. But as you can see, you can see through to the front of the house, the lights, the fire trucks out the front, totally destroyed, roofs gone. But the back half of the house is in good shape. The fireys have saved the kitchen and the hallway, and bedrooms remain intact. The fireys are entitled to be pleased with their efforts. They contained the damage, plus the search confirms no one died in the blaze. Mopping up is the responsibility of the first crew to arrive. 27 heads back to base. We're about ready, we're going home. We've got our fill, so see us back at Paramount. The case is now with the police. And fire brigade, um, we've had a report of a person with a ring stuck on their finger. Where were they? Uh, they're at Leichhardt Fire Station. Rescue 15 are jewellery experts, but their specialty isn't so much design as demolition. City Collins Rescue 15 Blue, code 3, Leichhardt Fire Station, over. Their services are in constant demand. Today, they're off to a nearby station where a young lady is in a bit of a jam. What have you done? Okay, guys, how are you? A wedding last night and yep. for ring, and when I went to take it off this morning, um, it won't come, it won't off. come off. And I've tried everything. I've tried olive oil, um, moisturiser. How important or sentimental is the ring it's to you? Not. It's not? No. So is that quite sore? Uh, yeah. yeah. Nick isn't especially attached to the ring, but it's very attached to her. Finger kit, yeah, finger kit. Yeah. Unlike hospitals, fire stations don't get too many walk-ins, so Nick's a bit of a novelty, much like the ring. And when you say you put on last night, yeah. this is our ring cutter here. Okay. I'm just going to slide that under here. It's just a small grinding, grinding wheel, and I'll just take my hand. Okay. Um, if you get any discomforts, let us know. All right. This isn't the first time Joel's dealt with a wardrobe malfunction. I actually, I knew that it was going to be a little bit tighter on that finger, but thought I could pull it off easily. Um, when I woke up this morning, no joy, and, and then I suppose I started to get into a bit of a panic when I realised that I couldn't get it off myself. And I'd heard that um, that fire officers might be able to take them off before, so we jumped in the car and drove straight up here, and here we are. The cutter slices the ring like a knife through butter. Just sit straight up. Oh. Thank you. Just, um, 
Just uh, massage your finger a little yeah, bit. Yeah, to get this right sore. Through. Okay, you should be able to get that uh, rejoined. It can get peace in it. So I don't still... really want to wear it again. <laughs> <laughs> Not after this. Uh, it's, it is sore, but I'm very relieved. Give us a look. The ring is destined for the scrap heap. Well, she's got a finger, so I'm super happy. <laughs> Yeah, at least I've got the figure still. It's not a bad feeling either, being fussed over by, what, over 10 firemen. <laughs> Fire brigade. Well, I've set the stove light, now I can't see in the kitchen. What you do is you close the door to the kitchen to prevent the fire spread and get out of the house. We're on our way. It's nearly dinner time, and that's peak hour for traffic and kitchen fires. Uh, we've been responded to a, a kitchen fire at Empire. Uh, at the moment, we haven't heard any uh, radio reports, but I'll give us some more. The boys from 88 arrive to find Janice leaning against her veranda, struggling for breath. You OK? Yeah, right. Just you might want to just, just stay out of the smoke a bit, just yeah. so you're OK. You sure you're all right? You don't yeah, need anything? Fine. No, I'm fine. You don't want us to see an ambulance, do we? No, no. Are you sure? The stove fires out, and so's the dog, although she's not straying too far from those burnt chops. I put the grill on and put some pork chops underneath it, and the phone rang, and I could see smoke, and I thought, that's strange. So I panicked, and I grabbed the tea towel and grabbed the grill out and threw it in the sink and poured water on it. But when I came back and looked in the grill compartment, I could see the flames going up the back of the stove. So that's when I rang the fire brigade. The fireys need to clear the house of smoke before they can let Janice and her companion inside. Don't talk on the phone when you're grilling. <laughs> in all her 71 years, Janice has never so much as burnt the toast. And just as well, given that her smoke detectors haven't made it out of the box. I'll take more care next time. Yeah, that's right. You want to cook something else for dinner now? Oh, I don't feel like dinner now anyway. <laughs> and then first right. Rescue is a varied occupation. One moment you're a jeweller, the next an electrician. Fifteen's now off to a call of wires down on a truck. It could be that the truck's actually hit the pole or it's actually clipped the wire, so we're not too sure what to expect at the moment. The crew quickly spots the stricken vehicle, stuck between two factories. From here, there's a brake light on, so I think the truck driver's still in the truck. So <laughs> it's probably a bit worried at the moment. James was just coming back from his lunch break when he tried to squeeze his truck underneath some low-slung electricity wires. By the time I heard it, um, it had actually come over the exhaust pipe and dropped down between the cab and the, the toilet line of air, and once it's in there, mate, she's not going anywhere. With 240 volts overhead, James realises his best move is not to move at all. If he makes contact with the ground, he could be toast. What happens is your earth within the car so there's no problem because you're not actually touching the ground which is the, the issue so while you're in the car you could have you know sparking on top of the vehicle and you'll be okay as long as you don't touch the ground got a bottle of water or something mate sure yeah. just need to be careful when you're touching yeah i was gonna throw it to yeah. him i wasn't gonna go <laughs> hey grab this hey the fire is risk electrocution if they even touch dave those wires are live at the moment, so there could be 415 or 240 volts going through them at the moment. A 100 volt shock can kill, so James is staying put. After an hour carefully avoiding electrocution, James is given the all clear to get out of his truck. He's safe, but he's starting to worry about his job. Now it's just a chance to uh, kick back and think how much the boss is going to be kicking my butt tomorrow. Further help arrives. Yeah, the uh, energy people are here now and they're just working out where they have to actually isolate the power. You reckon he's safe to get out? People, yeah, he can get out. Can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good, mate. You can jump out if you like. Mate, from a brigade point of view, all we can do is really make it safe and you're out, so we're, we're out of here. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. Energy Australia, I'll hook you and we think like you can catch up on the rest of your run. Yeah, thanks very much, mate. You, Appreciate mate. it. Thanks, boys. 
fire brigade. Yeah, I know, my house is on fire, please. Are you able to get all the children out of the house? Yeah, I will, I will. Please, okay. I will. The crew from 62 is racing to a house fire. We're going to Sefton from Bankstown, so 85 Chester Hill should beat us there. So we'll be second station arriving. They're waiting for a report from the scene. Right now, they don't know what to expect. This, this road continues all the way through, does it? Mum's made it out of the house, but Mark needs to check all of her kids are out as well. My daughter was upstairs in the, in the, in the toilet and she found the fan. It was all on fire. She screamed out, fire, fire. So I went up there and the fire was everywhere. There's the fire. It's up the roof. It's up for a minute. OK. So if we can get rid of this. We've got electrical fire. Mark confirms all of the children are out of the house and that the source of the fire is in the roof. Right. CO2? Yeah, well. Power's off? Yeah. We've got an exhaust fan. It's overheated. It caught some insulation with a lot of dust and it was just a slow smouldering fire. When we come up, the flames were only about 15 centimetres high, but it quickly could have spread because with the smouldering fire, it was super heating up here. So after a short period of time, could definitely ignite. We contained it to a small area. There's minimal damage. And uh, yeah, we should be able to get the people straight back in. We'll do a bit of ventilation downstairs and it all should come good. It was a slow smouldering fire and not in plain view. And that's what makes it so dangerous. The potential of this fire is that it would spread through into the ceiling, into the rafters, and possible causing a roof collapse and then trapping the occupants inside. So especially a fire that's concealed in an area like a void like that can be potentially dangerous. Uh, it was quick to get to it. The owners were, had quick action, listened to their smoke alarm, evacuated the occupants, and were on scene within a few minutes to deal with it. Today is one of the biggest days of Gibbo's life. He's been training with 15 for six months, and now it's time to find out just how much he's learned. Yeah, it'd be stupid if you didn't think that there was a chance of failing one of these. There's a whole lot of key competencies, and you only have to do one wrong and you fail. So, yeah, you'd be stupid if you didn't think you could fail it, but uh, I hope I don't. If Gibbo passes this exam, he'll become a fully qualified rescue officer. The reason he joined in the first place looking for immediate hazards. I'm looking for up around, underneath and inside the vehicle. Yep. Gibbo has his own fan club. I've got help feeling like he's the little duckling that's gone out onto the pond for the first time, but, but he'll be OK. So as I said, you need to put the handbrake on, make sure the handbrake is engaged, the vehicle is in gear and the ignition was turned off. Excellent. Yep. Um, once you... I always get nervous with the, the guys going out there doing their training. Gibbo seems to be breezing through, but there's a lot to remember and just as much to forget. Gibbo and his cheer squad are back from the rescue exam. He passed. But that's not what they're telling Jock. Post. In fiery speak, you either pass or post an exam. Posting is a fail. How is he, Zero? He's all right. Disappointed? A little disappointed, yeah. Jock has been helping Gibbo prepare for today's exam. So he's as crushed as his student. It's a lot to remember on the day, you know, and just the little things. It's not didn't know it, just made a mistake. But Jock's also the station so joker. And it seems Gibbo picked up more from him than just rescue technique. Yeah, I'm actually going to need those epaulets now, Jock, if you could get on that. Then. Cause he pass. He passed. He passed. The A-double-S. Shake and bake. Nice. <laughs> The joke is on Jock, but the last laugh might still be on Gibbo. His rescue skills are needed straight away. Sorry. Hi, Barry. He's got an accident at Concord. Two vehicles have hit each other, and then one has hit a pole. We're off to a motor vehicle accident. Uh, there's a fire truck there already. 
which has confirmed that there is a person trapped in the vehicle. So we're now heading off that way now. Second satellite's right turn after this. Oh, you can see all the traffic yeah. up here anyway. If you're good enough to pass a rescue exam, you're good enough to call the shots at a rescue scene. 15's second truck arrives to find the newly qualified Gibbo already on the job. Two cars involved? Yeah, sure. Susan, the driver, is trapped. We're going to take our time here and we're going to remove the side of the car and dismantle the vehicle around her so we can get her out nice and easy and slow and uh, hopefully avoid any further injury to us to make recovery time a lot quicker. Uh, the guy's just going to get rid of the seat belt, the glass and bits and pieces, then we'll take the door off and probably take some of the side out here just to create some extra space so we can get a spinal board in there. Gibbo works slowly and carefully. The slightest jolt could aggravate Susan's neck injury. So shear blades on the locker, like that, yep. And straight down to the guard, to the wheel arch. Good. Chris, the SO, slips back into his mentoring role. This is not an easy operation. I'll just fold it all the way down. Anthony's real first test at a motor vehicle rescue. Um, sort of a complicated one because it's a, what we call a third door entry where we're trying to make entry into a uh, two door car, making a third door. So uh, it's quite quite tricky to make sure you to put the cuts in the right place, but he, he did well. Susan's released from the wreckage without so much as a shudder. Yeah, this is uh, the first one since I got qualified, which is uh, awesome. awesome to be able to help someone. And, and yeah, we got a good response. And... Four months on, and both of our car crash victims are doing well. Susan and Yaya suffered no serious injuries. Thanks to the fireys, Janice now has smoke alarms throughout her house. Her oven's still damaged, so it's microwave pork chops for a while yet. And with that, it's goodbye for this season of Fire Triple Zero. Now, search and rescue.